Hi everyone, Dr. Victoria Skirbo here, speaking to you from the Siege of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. It's time for Tower Scopes again. This will be the Tower Scopes for the month of May for the sign of Aquarius. It's Aquarius Sun, Aquarius Moon, Aquarius Rising. And we have a very big month in May. So we're going to do a little astrology first, specifically for you and for everybody, really. And um, then we're going to look at a uh, oracle card. And then we're going to do a reading with uh, some tarot cards. So we're going to start with uh, Pluto. Pluto actually uh, on the 1st of May changes direction. Why is that significant? Well, it's significant, but why it's especially significant to you Aquarius is because Pluto is in Aquarius, right? Pluto just moved into Aquarius back in March and has been moving very, very slowly forward in Aquarius. It has reached 22 minutes of Aquarius, hasn't even gone through the full first degree of Aquarius. And already we can see all kinds of changes and shifts in not only what's going on in the outer world, but we can feel it in our inner world as well. All right. Um, so from now on until um, until Pluto moves out of Aquarius on the 11th of June, now Pluto is going to be moving back over all the areas that uh, it went over when it moved forward through uh, Aquarius. And so some of the things that have been brought out, uh, now we get to review and look at and, 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 and start to integrate into ourselves. And then of course, this is the first time that Pluto has been in Aquarius in over 240 odd years or, or 220 years, if you include the time it was in Aquarius back in the 1700s, but we're talking about 1700s. So we're talking about American Revolution, we're talking about French Revolution, and we can see even now as, as, as Pluto moves into Aquarius, both France and the United States are going through their own sort of revolutions, aren't they? Their democracies are being challenged, are they not? And so we can see uh, that happening in the, in the larger world. Now, as an Aquarius, you have two ruling planets. You have Saturn and you have Uranus. Saturn was the original ruler of, of um, Aquarius before they discovered Uranus. And then once Uranus was discovered in the 1700s, by the way, um it um um it's the ruler of of your planet and uh the ruler of your sign of course uranus is in taurus taurus is square your sign that they're both fixed signs taurus being fixed earth yours being fixed fire this is um the square that it creates is a first quarter crisis and action square so there's this feeling of needing to take an action, doing things that might be uncharacteristic of you, as it were, as as we have, uh, and and that's been going on for a while because uh, I think Uranus has been in um, Uranus has been in Taurus since either 2017 or 2018, so it's 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 wild. And now, um, actually, the Sun makes a conjunction to Uranus this month on uh, the ninth. And it's at 19 degrees. And so now Uranus is going to be moving into that last decan of Taurus. And the last decan of Taurus is ruled by uh, Saturn. Correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Saturn. So now we're really going to see structures uh, being challenged and those structures that cannot withstand the energy of progress, the progressive shift that we're all like sort of moving in will fall. But that's that's a longer story, not just not just for you, it's for all of us. All right, what else is happening today, uh, this month? So we have Pluto changing direction in your sign. We have um, um, we have a couple of uh, we have um, Mercury, which is in Taurus right now. Uh, changing direction on the 14th, I believe. The 14th, it goes direct. So we have Pluto go retrograde. We have uh, um, Mercury go direct. We have some changes in signs. We have uh, Venus changing into Cancer. G Venus moves from Gemini, which is a sign that you're more comfortable with, certainly, than, than, uh, than uh, Cancer 
Venus loves being in Cancer, but Aquarius just don't necessarily love that because it's very emotional and it gets can be very personal and and all those things that sometimes Aquarius isn't all that comfortable with. And then that's just a general statement. You may be an Aquarius who's very comfortable with deep emotions and 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 dealing with emotionality, um, but it's not really the, the most most Aquarius aren't too into that. Um, we also have uh, Jupiter moving and changing signs from Aries into Taurus. And when it does that, it squares Pluto. Um, and so that's very powerful. And then we have Mars moving into Leo. And that also squares Pluto. And no, actually Mars moving into Leo opposes Pluto and squares Jupiter. And this is all happening at the nodes of the moon. So this month is a, a crossroad month for sure. And uh, let's see if there's anything else I wanna mention. If you really wanna know what's going on with the month ahead, um, you need to check out my astrology in Kabbalah of uh, May, 2023, and you can get a bigger, broader picture. I just wanted to briefly go over it for you, Aquarius. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick a uh, card, a uh, oracle card. This is the Soul Flower Plant Spirit or Oracle by Lisa Estaba, and I will show you. Uh, I'll show you the book. I'm going to read right out of the book here. Sunflower, Soul Flower. Sorry, sorry, Lisa. This is a great. It's a great deck. I purchased it when I purchased my. Uh, um, star seed deck and that was the deck I used last month for the for your oracle read and I want to start with this just to kind of get a sense so what do Aquarius need to know oh great plant spirit oracle what do the plants have to say kind of in honor of spring and everything turning green here this is my favorite time of year my favorite month I got married in this month I lost my dad in this month and I'm going to Ireland in this month. So I'm excited. I'll be in Ireland for 10 days. So Michael will be here holding down the fort and I will be going around the Ring of Kerry, I think that's what I was told. Okay, what do we have here? Evening Primrose, Rebirth. Oh my goodness. That's a biggie, Rebirth. Evening, I know Evening Primrose is good for, um, for women troubles painful periods and the like all right oh it's let me read this to you it says evening primrose helps you to release old wounds and feelings of rejection self-pity and other heavy heart issues you may have carried from birth or early childhood she allows for the sort for a sort of spiritual rebirthing or a birthing of your true self you can make room for more joy, fun, and playfulness in your life. Well, I like the sound of that. Makes me want to be a, an Aquarius. Well, I do have a south node in Aquarius, so I can claim this. All right. There is an intelligence in order to nature, to the universe that we as humans are always trying to manage and control. And yet we are consistently reminded that in truth, this is not possible. There is no end to suffering. There is no end to joy. There is no end to dark. There is no end to light. There is no end to pain. There is no end to love. There is no end to all of this. There is no end, just ever expanding consciousness. Round and round we go on the beautiful spiral of life. Arrive, learn, make mistakes, grow, new day, celebrate, rebirth, live, love, expand, release, renew, rebirth, Deeper and deeper we go, wider and wider in spirals of understanding and awareness. We birth ourselves many times over in the course of a lifetime. Rebirthing is the process of birthing our authentic self. And in order to do this, we have to be willing to be brutally honest with ourselves. Uh, we, we have to allow ourselves to be vulnerable. Vulnerability supports and nourishes self-reflection and will allow us to recognize and then to let go of labels, stories, beliefs, conditionings, and so on that no longer define us, a spiritual rebirthing. As we shed layers of what we are not, we come closer to understanding who we are. We go through this process and over and over in our lives, 
coming to deeper and deeper understandings of who we truly are and our place in this glorious universe. When we choose to allow ourselves to be vulnerable, we can create ourselves anew moment by moment, every single day. What are you bringing to light in this moment? Rebirth, nice rebirth, how lovely. All right, so that's your oracle. Evening primrose. Ooh, excuse me, I'm a little parched. Okay, let's use the fountain deck. I'm gonna use the fountain deck for you. I might have actually used this last month too. I don't remember. I should keep track of the, the, the ones I use for what signs because I tend to, you know, I tend to have favorites for certain signs. But I love this deck. Love, love, love this deck. I first saw it when I was watching uh, Amanda Ellis. I like watching Amanda Ellis, Metatron, her Metatron stuff. For a while there, I was a little uh, with her, but she's good. She's good. She's doing her thing. She's bringing in the light. Bringing in the light. Okay. Let's see what we have here. Aquarius. We start with the emperor. The emperor. Um. Here we see this gentleman sort of examining the box, examining a box, and perhaps putting a box into a box, standing on a platform and examining the box. The four, uh, the emperor is the four card, and it is about being in the box. Uh, but of course, you being uh, an Aquarius, you live outside of the box. And so is this you lifting the box away from people? Are you... Uh, showing people that there's other ways, different ways of doing things. It is about dominion. It is about having control of your environment. What challenge is that? <laughs> uh, feelings and emotions from the past, the six of cups. Interesting. Perhaps um, there's something to the soul flower, rebirthing, evening primrose oil, letting go of old, um, old feelings childhood conditionings perhaps see what's underneath we have the world so this is about endings and new beginnings this is something has been given birth to and so a new manifestation has has come come to four so to speak a new manifestation let's see what's in the past we have the empress card in the past so this is fertility, fecundity, uh, feminine power. Uh, perhaps you have connected to that part of yourself. This is creative imagination. Creative imagination. Let's see what's in the sky for you. We have the Knight of Cups. This is the dreamer. This is, uh, you see he has that cup right on his crown chakra. There is connection to spirit here. Um, there's an idealism, there's a, a um, an innocence that comes in with the Knight of, of Cups. Uh, I think the Knight of Cups is often well-intentioned, but doesn't always back it up with uh, with uh, the right kind of actions that you, that you might expect. So there is messages coming for you. There is good news on the way. In the immediate future, we have the Five of Cups. There's still some things that you need to let go of and mourn. Again, Aquarius isn't always the best at delineating their feelings. They tend to think their feelings try, and try to be uh, a little bit more detached um, from the the messiness of a feeling because feeling can get pretty, you can get pretty bogged down in that. But this is asking you to mourn your losses, to take the time to heal, to take the time to evaluate what has been lost, but not to spend all the time doing that. Once you've gotten over what's been lost, it's time for you to look around and, st and see what you still have. And you can take those cups on the road with you and you can move forward uh, with a deeper understanding of yourself, a deeper uh, um, connection to your emotions and your feelings. 
uh, how it's seen from the outside, we get the 10 of coins. So people see you as pretty prosperous, pretty prosperous, pretty um, from a long line of uh, something uh, from a from a, a tradition, a tradition, your domestic situation. We have the nine of wands. Looks like you've been working on something, uh, climbing the mountain, so to speak. The nine of wands requires us to be careful. You see, he's up there pretty high. He's almost there. So you have to watch your step as you get to the top of something. Um, and, and not only being careful, but to see the view from the top. It's time for you to see the view from the top. Uh, or maybe rest in your struggles to get to the top and look around and see what you're seeing um, without losing your footing, without losing your footing. Uh, your hopes and fears, you would like to move away from um from trauma, you would like to move away from drama. You would like to move into calmer emotional waters. Well, you, you, there's some emotions, definitely some emotions here. Uh, hopes and fears, the nine of swords. This is anxiety. This is fear. You have a lot of fear. What are you afraid of? Let's see. Let's see what's the fear around justice, the ace of swords, the ace of swords. Or decision, you're fearing a decision. I'll keep going. Do we get a major arcana? The hermit. Okay. Um, you, okay. It looks like you may have to stand on alone and you're anxious about it. You're anxious about it. Um, you're sort of standing your ground here. So so let's see. Let's see what's underneath it. The the hermit card can either mean um, the power of one person, right? The, in their wisdom. This is a healing card. It's a nine. It's about letting go. This is the forgiveness card. Maybe it's time to let go of something. Let's see what's underneath it. The eight of coins. The King of Swords, ah, and the Queen of Coins. Okay. I think you're in good stead, actually. Um, I think the hard part for this, I think all of this stuff that you're experiencing at the end here, the nine of the nine of swords, the ace of swords, and then the hermit card. Um is really a call to the healing process that you're going through uh, as you deal with some losses in your life, dealing with some losses in your life. This guy actually looks like a friend of mine, Tony. Tony, he was a nice guy, a dentist. I know he might be retired by now. Everybody's retired, but me, I think. All right, there we go, Tony. Was he an Aquarius? I think he might have been a Libra. Um, there are some things, some, I think there are some family things, issues. I feel like there's some issues around family here and, um, I think you'll get your due. I don't know if there's some sort of family legal issue going on and there's some um, residual uh, pain around your childhood or around whether you were treated fairly in your family and the like. Um, but at the root of it, uh, you will be taken care of and justice will serve. And uh, what you've built, uh, you will be able to continue to build. So I'm not really sure what that, what all that's about, but you probably know better than I do. And I'm gonna leave it at that. So hopefully you find that helpful. Um, if you would like to uh, uh, have a reading with me, you can do that. I do astrology, numerology and Kabbalah readings. Uh, if you wanna know what those are like, you can check out any of my in the news segments or any of my, um, any of the stuff that I put out on different people uh, and how I do the readings using astrology, numerology, and Kabbalah. If you'd like to uh, help support my work, I certainly would 
greatly appreciate that. I do have a Patreon page. If you give me a thumbs up and a like and share it with your friends, that's helpful. I'm trying to figure out how to get myself back in in the uh, in the algorithm. Um, I, I seem to be stuck. <laughs> and I don't know enough how to get unstuck. So however you can help me with that, I'd be greatly appreciated. Until next month, have yourself a wonderful month. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Check out my offerings on my page. Uh, all the links for Patreon and the like are down below. Uh, and readings are down below. And I will see you again next month for the Taroscopes for the month of June. Oh, dear. Uh, until then, take care. Much love. Namaste. <laughs>